um, <clears throat> you know, it was it was very exciting. I, I mean, my whole summer, our whole summer, was completely dominated by the World Cup. We make sure that we never book shows on England game days. Just emotionally can't deal with it. We did it once, 2010, when we were in America, and we watched um, England draw to the USA when Robert Green let in that goal um, late on, and it was one all. And we had to play in the evening. It was just a rubbish show because yeah. we were just too depressed. We ended up, Winston and I went to Moscow for the semi-final. And we had tickets to the final. We had this very fun week planned because we thought we'd, we'd get through Croatia and probably lose to France in the final, which I'd be happy with because my first memory is the 1990 semi-final when Gary Lineker cried. Sorry, if you ask me about football, I'm just going to go on and on. <laughs> Sorry, not Gary Lineker. When um, when uh, Gaza when Gaza cried, and my brother cried, and I cried. I was three. It's my first living memory, not my first football memory. My first living memory. So uh, it was very important to me to be at the next semi-final since then, right? So Winston and I went to Moscow. Spent the day, got there really early, spent the day going around on the underground in Moscow and uh, wearing our England shirts, which, you know, at times felt a little edgy. <laughs> and then, and it was quite quiet and people don't really communicate that much on the subway in Moscow. It's very different to New York, for example. Um, and, uh, and then on the way to the match, suddenly 30,000 England fans are on the subway in Moscow, all singing and chanting and singing the national anthem in Moscow. You know, it was pretty, it was pretty special. Then we lost. And Winston and I walked for five kilometres afterwards and didn't say a word to one another. Called my travel agent, um, asked to get on the next flight back, which was the next morning. Went and drank a beer and it was pretty depressing.